Huh? Oh no, not another one. Ah! Ooh. How's a rock supposed to get any sleep with all these earthquakes? Uh-oh. <coughs> Whoa, now that was some blast. I wonder if there's anyone else under all this ash. Huh? Whoa! <coughs> hey, it's Pocket Gopher. If she survived the blast, there's hope that others have as well. That means the forest can start its natural succession. It'll take a while to grow back, but I've seen this sort of thing before. Nothing to do now but sit back and wait. Huh? Who's this now? Okay, the survey plot's set up. Now we can see what survived the blast. The ecologists! They must be here to study the forest succession. Interesting. These saplings just bent in the blast while all the older trees were blown down and broken. Hey, look at all these gopher mounds. Their underground tunnel system must have protected them. It looks like some small pockets of seedlings have survived as well. Have you noticed all the insects? They're recolonizing the area and appear to be thriving off these plants. I also see some traces of deer mice. Each one of these small species helps another to return. Ugh, all these bugs are kind of creeping me out, but they're food for the animals and that's a good thing. Ew. Dad, Dad! Hey! Watch where you're stepping, kid! Did you see that? It took a lot of years for this ecosystem to build support for animals as large as that elk. I didn't think anything survived the volcano. Actually, in some areas, a small number of plants and animals did survive the blast. And it's because of those survivors that this forest has grown back to what we see now. What about this rock? Hey! Did it survive the blast? <laughs> Definitely. Of course I did. I had a front row seat for the whole thing. Wow. Wait, where are you taking me? I'm ready to give my presentation now, Miss Heedy. You'd think these kids had never seen a rock in a glass bowl before. <laughs> Natural succession is the process of disturbed land returning to a sustainable and stable environment. An example of this is Mount St. Helens. When Mount St. Helens erupted, it destroyed much of the surrounding areas. However, there were some regions where plants and animals actually survived. In the 10 years since the eruption, these surviving species have worked together to naturally make their environment stable once more. Hey, that's what those ecologists were talking about. But what's the point of studying all this stuff? Scientists study areas like Mount St. Helens to better understand how forests grow back naturally. Whoa. And they use that information to help plan for their own reclamation projects. If humans are going to use some land, a team of scientists research the area and plan on how best to minimize the disturbance. When the land is finished with, this plan is then used to restore it back to a condition similar to how it was before. This is called land reclamation. Just like the forest at Mount St. Helens, but with some human help and planning. Sounds to me like Kevin's hooked on this land reclamation stuff. I wouldn't be surprised to see him. Whoa, Kevin, it looks like 10 years is a lot more time for a person than it is for a rock. I have the mining site proposal on my desk right now. Now that we've taken a look at the soil, vegetation, water, and wildlife at the site, we can start writing the reclamation plan. Well, the first step is saving all the topsoil so we can reuse it. It's chock full of seeds and rootlets that'll help the area grow back faster. And in two years, once they're done mining, we'll put that topsoil back to help reclaim the whole area. Wait a minute. Two more years in this stuffy office? I didn't survive an eruption just to sit on a desk, did I? <gasps> it's about time we got here. The only thing worse than sitting on a desk is being cooped up in a briefcase. All right, crew. The mining site is finished with, and now it's time to follow our reclamation plan. We'll begin by leveling the mine out and breaking up the roadways. Once that's done, the topsoil can be brought back and spread out. Any questions? Sounds good. Got it, boss. 
Well, Rock, you've seen so much. It seems like a waste to keep you in my office any longer. Come on, Kevin. You're making me tear up over here. It may not be as exciting as a volcano, but how about a front row seat to our little reclamation project? Finally, back to the great outdoors. Ah, Rock could get used to all this peace and quiet again. Hey, watch it, buddy. <laughs> Come on, you've been filling that hole for four weeks already. How long is it gonna take? That must be the topsoil Kevin was talking about. I wonder where they stored it for the past two years. This guy again? He comes around each month like clockwork to check this place out. It's looking pretty good to me, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a rock in the grass. This was the site of the old mine? Huh? That's right, Jenny. It was right in front of us, and the access road was where we're standing. Now there's a familiar voice. It's Kevin, and it sounds like he brought his daughter. But I don't see anything but plants and grass. We planned the reclamation very carefully, just so you wouldn't. In fact, we even saved the topsoil so these plants would grow back faster. You did a really good job, Dad. I can't see... Oh, I can see some pieces of road over here. Whoa! Oh, wait. This is just a rock. You won't find any remains of the mine out here. Otherwise, we couldn't have had this site certified. I don't think Kevin knows it's me, but that's all right. I barely recognized him with that beard. Can we visit another one of your projects, Dad? Of course we can, but none of them are this far along. I don't mind. Well, let's go then. Coming, Dad! Here we go again. 